14,000 pounds. Mind you, this truck does need a tune. 14,000 pounds, doing uh, just under 70, actually right at 70, 2,000 RPM, torque converter locked up, cruising. Got the new girl behind us, new trailers pulling perfect. No swaying, no lugging. Girl gets up to speed just fine. She just cruising along. Look at that. Flawless. I am a happy camper today. Now this with 342s, six liter, two wheel drive. I said it does need a tune. Right now it's running a little rich and still she's just chugging along. So, uh, very, very, very happy. Uh, axle's holding up well. Truck's doing good. We in there. So here we are, back at home. I'm gonna try to do this before we run out of light. This is my dream project because this is uh, one of my childhood pickups. Dad bought this about eight years ago. This is the truck I did my permit driving hours in. Truck I took my license test in. Um, it's the first truck I ever drove myself to work in. Got a lot of memories in this old girl. Um, she needs some TLC. She hasn't been ran in, uh, say, close to eight or nine months now, but we're going to make a big project out of her. And I got, uh, got a lot of plans for this. Not going to say what I'm doing quite yet. You guys will find out soon enough. Um, but I can do whatever I want to this one. It ain't got to get me to work. Now this one's... Uh, my current truck over there, you saw I put the uh, the one ton axle in it, did flawless as you saw on the highway. I mean, it pulled perfectly. Um, hell, it didn't even, didn't even lug around. Um, but this is a three quarter ton, obviously single cab long bed, two wheel drive. This is a base model work truck package. She got the crank windows, manual locks, vinyl floorboard. Uh, pretty much nothing fancy about it. It's got cruise control and that's it. Um, this one on the other hand. Uh, battery's dead. I actually had to pull it up on the trailer. This one, it's got uh, the premium sound. Uh, power locks, power windows, cruise control. It's a uh, 4x4. Now this one was rebuilt in Texas before my dad got it. Um, and this one also has a 6 liter. It's got the, can't really see that well, but it's got the uh, center console up there. The visor console, the brain fart, I'm sorry. Um, they're both 2003s. Uh, this one's obviously extended cab short bed, four by four half ton. Um, and it, it's crazy, because uh, my dad was actually a huge Ford guy growing up that's all we drove in was Fords and this was the first Chevy he ever brought home and I'd say about three years later I brought home that one uh, they're both forest green they're both 2003s um, now mine the left side is ugly the right side is the pretty side this one the left side is the pretty side the right side's ugly uh, this one needs uh, cab corners and rocker panels too it's also got a clear coat fading got this gash in the bed looks like water got behind it somehow um, this is a z71 package uh, but that's the basic rundown of it truck means a lot to me so I'm gonna try to give this one my all um, she needs some work but eventually she'd be pretty good well that's all I got for tonight I'm gonna go ahead and get this thing unloaded um, I am going to do a review soon on the trailer. This is a Blazer trailer. It's, uh, it's all right. We'll go with that for now. Um, but the trailer did great. It hauled okay. Um, pulled fine. Everything worked like it was supposed to. Nothing sketchy on the trip. So uh, we're pretty well set up. All right, y'all. So uh, it's the next day. Got a lot more light out here. Um, so I, I waited until the day to get some more video of this guy but we had to wrestle about an hour and a half to get her off the trailer all the brakes are sticking uh, couldn't get it to start um, it's it hasn't been ran and I think like eight or nine months something like that um, 
can actually see that's from when it was in Texas. So it is a southern truck. I guess it got rebuilt down there, uh, came back up north, and then my dad bought it. Um, but this is actually, I guess, when they rebuilt it. I don't know if you can see the casting number on the head there. 317 head. This is an LQ4 6 liter. So same engine that's in the 3 quarter ton. And I thought it had a 4L60. Uh, but my stepbrother who got it uh, before me, I actually got it off him. Uh, he told me he did a trans service on it. And the trans fan actually has 17 bolts indicating that it's a 4L80E. Let's take a quick look under. Ah. Oh. Let's see. Looks like we got some leaks down here we gotta take care of. Yep, that's 4L80. But we're gonna go ahead and fire my truck up, steal the battery out of it while it's running. I'll uh, let the alternator keep that one running so I don't have to worry about starting it if I kill the battery. Uh, gonna throw the battery in this beast, throw the jump pack on it too. Uh, see if we can't get this started and get it moved out of the way there so I can get past it. We had to, <laughs> had to beat on the calipers to get it off the trailer. Um, they're all sticking up. Um, I was an idiot and set the parking brake. I had to beat them loose. But uh, six liter, four L80, four wheel drive. I said this one, uh, it actually has a pretty decent interior for the year um, definitely needs cleaned definitely needs a floor pan just like mine I'm um, starting to think that's more common than I thought on these Chevys wheel drive it's got the overhead console the center console it's got the phone holder millennial joke yeah first things first check the oil on the old girl been sitting for eight months and I see that there's a very obvious oil leak from that oil pan. So we're just going to double check and make sure she's topped up. Last thing I want to do is spin this thing over a bunch with no oil in it. Destroy a bearing. As we can see, we're full. Definitely due for an oil change, but she ain't going to be run anytime soon. So. start getting parts for that truck pretty soon I uh, still have a few things to sort out on this one uh, the guy I was gonna go through with the tuner I don't think it's gonna work out so I'm actually looking at getting a MB MPVI 2 from HP tuners um, that'll do everything I need to do as far as the speedo correction disabling the rear O2s uh, give it a tune and it'll also allow me to enable the fan PCM signal coming out of the computer um, so I was actually going to get that for the same price as I pay for regular tune. I've never tuned before, but, uh, you know, part of the, uh, whole eventually pretty good thing is if you just pick something up, uh, try to learn something new that you're not exactly comfortable with, eventually you'll be pretty good at it. Save yourself some time, save yourself some money. Uh, you're just expanding your reach a little bit there. So something we're going to dive into. Uh, I try not to let things scare me too much. Sorry, buddy, you're going to have to wait. To be fair, like, with your brakes and its brakes, it should be enough to slow down whatever you've got on the back. My brakes really didn't care all that much. They just got a little warm. Okay. 
rinsed it off for the video. That truck ain't gotten washed in about eight months. That thing hasn't gotten a truck wash since this thing's been driven. <laughs> it's been too busy doing truck stuff. I still thought that was funny. <laughs> Pulling up next to that kid, and I was like, "Hey, mine squatted too." <laughs> and he didn't even, he didn't even say anything. He just nodded, like, "Okay," and then rolled his window back up. It's like, no, but mine's like squatted the right way. Like, <laughs> go ahead and crank it. You gotta push in on the ignition a little bit. Yeah, baby. First time it's ran in about eight months, YouTube. pounds of oil pressure. sounds like a giant fan all right so I'm gonna go ahead and pop this battery back out I don't know if uh, the alternator is charging we're about to find out so if it dies when we pull the battery off then we know that's uh, one problem we have hopefully that alternator stays charging good what we can do is we can let this thing idle for a few hours maybe get a charge on that old battery uh, might be able to save it not sure it's kind of cold out and it has been sitting a while I'm gonna go ahead and uh, swap this battery back out, put the old one back in, see if we can't get a charge on it. Actually, let's move it first in case it does die. I think that would be the smart option. to hear it run. She runs good too, nice and smooth. I would say it arguably runs better than the three-quarter ton. Well, actually, not anymore, but once it gets to tune, she'll be nice. This one's got the four tech. It 
most of the day and just let it get this uh, battery charged up get some temperature in it just uh, kind of get things moving hasn't ran in eight months so gonna let it get warm let it get a heat cycle in it hopefully charge up this battery some so that way when we do go to move it it's not such a pain um, if we can at least get somewhat of a charge in there to where the boost box is enough to get it started I'd be happy with that said few things we're going to take care of on the Silverado first. I am going to do the electric fan conversion. Um, go ahead and uh, get my uh, my tuning software and sort out what I need to sort out and then that'll be uh, pretty much sorted for the time being. We might do some projects here and there on it. Um, but after some more equipment rolls in, which I cannot wait to show you guys, uh, we're going to start doing some really cool things to this one. Uh, got big plans for it. Very ambitious. I haven't touched this truck since I was about 16. Um, I actually plastic dipped all of the uh, the grill and the bumper that's peeling and the mirrors that are peeling and the wheels that are peeling when I was uh, 15 or 16 years old. Um, I've rebuilt the brakes on it once or twice and I was 15, 16. Uh, probably the reason why they're sticking now because I didn't really know what I was doing back then. I did okay. Uh, but I have a chance to redeem myself, so we're gonna do that. So the gauge is definitely, <laughs> uh, they're stuttering a little bit. Um, it's showing 14 volts, it's definitely charging. Well, I know it's charging, because, uh, yeah, take that out of four wheel, I guess. I know it's charging, uh, just because it, it was still running when I unhooked the battery. Um, showing 40 pounds of oil pressure, truck's running good. Um, do got an ABS light on. There is problems with the brakes, obviously. The parking brake light is on even though they're completely released, so we have an issue there. Uh, showing low coolant. Um, I really wish my three quarter ton had that trans temp sensor there, or the trans temp gauge. Uh, that is something I'm planning on adding it. Eventually I'm going to actually rebuild the gauge cluster, convert it over to LED. Um, I do know you have to get these clusters reprogrammed. I'm not sure if I can do that with HP tuners, but I'm going to find out the hard way. Um, but I'm, uh, I'm glad she got fired up and she's moving. One thing that also kind of makes me mad is this one's already got a better radio than mine. Well, not a better radio, but it sounds better. Grr. It's already got more working speakers and I just got it. GoPro battery died. Bear with me here. I don't know how good the video quality is going to be on this. Uh, figured I'd go ahead and hook a scanner up to it um, to see what kind of codes we're getting. We're going to go ahead and see what this ABS code is about. Let's see what she's got to complain about. Now this is the uh, Maxicheck MX-808. It doesn't do nothing crazy, um, but it does have live data. It does have the automatic VIN reader. Um, it just depends on which model and which year on how accurate it is. A lot of times it'll ask you some questions about it. Um, this time, see it's reading uh, 60 v 8 lq 4 And uh, you'll notice this says 2500, three quarter ton, extended cab, extended van. Um, the reason why is because obviously the PCM out of this was swapped with that uh, with that engine and transmission. Um, go ahead and click yes. Four speed automatic. Let's see. I believe electronic shift. And let's see. This is without throttle actuated. No, with throttle actuated. Do auto scan. This should scan through all of the systems. Okay. OK, 
Okay, so this here. Alrighty, electronic brake control module, so that would be the ABS module, motor relay circuit, so that tells me that there's a problem with the ABS module itself, which that was actually suspected of this truck. Um, they didn't know if uh, it was the uh, ABS module or if it was the master cylinder hanging up, so now we know. Um, thankfully, this scanner will do the uh, the ABS bleed, so if I do have to replace that, then that's no big deal. Uh, right front wheel speed signal missing, so probably a pinched wire or uh, either that or maybe the reluctor wheel for the ABS sensor is actually rusted up. Um, right front right front wheel speed sensor circuit open okay so open circuit that tells me most likely a problem with the wiring same with the left front um, now this might actually be a miscommunication error um, now with uh, with these engine swaps if uh, it's my understanding that if the body control module doesn't have the same VIN as the PCM they won't be able to uh, talk to each other um, I could be wrong on that on this year. To control unit, I will go to powertrain, and I will go to live data, engine live data. And we'll just go to engine data one. Just gonna give a quick overview on this, make sure everything's looking correct. We are getting an RPM signal. I wanna make sure that she's going into closed loop. We're at 194 degrees, so it should be. IAT, mass error, engine load zero. Make sure we're getting a uh, throttle pedal position. Just watch right there. Oh, the throttle sticks. Okay. Getting readings on all of our sensors. We are in closed loop. Make sure our O2 sensors are rapidly changing. So funny, I had mentioned that I did some plastic dipping. Um, this hood, the clear coat, was fading really bad. Um, I'll show you now that we actually have white. This whole passenger side of the truck was side swiped, uh, hence why it got rebuilt when it was spending its time down in Texas. Um, you can see the clear coat's fading really bad. That's where it's been resprayed. Re you can see here the really bad bodywork. You got orange peel. Um, you can actually see uh, some really deep scratches um, from where they didn't step up in their sanding and they didn't bodywork it right. We actually got some bondo here underneath where the paint's flaking. Uh, all down the bedside, same story. We got the, the fading clear coat. We actually have spots here where water got in behind the paint. I'd say it's most likely poor prep work. Um, I would say they tried to paint over rust and then uh, the rust kept spreading and spreading. They didn't isolate it, didn't fix it right, and here we are. But anyhow, back to this hood. Um, we pulled it off and we plastic dipped it. It was the first time I had ever used plastic dip and I didn't know you had to lay it on thick. Um, it didn't turn out right. We tried to get it off. Um, 10 out of 10 would not recommend. <laughs> it was a pain. So we tried to paint back over it and then rattle can clear and it looks pretty bad um, for the time for the time being it'll have to do it'll have its day now surprisingly um, this truck obviously has the, the typical Chevy rocker panel rust cab corner rust but um, the door jams actually aren't bad uh, the bottom of the doors need a little bit of work but savable um, the floor pans on this side are actually good. The floor pan on that side needs work. It's got good carpet, good seats. Um, all of this can be cleaned up. That's crazy, guys. There's at one point in time, I was riding in the back seat of that thing. Uh, there's one time I was driving this thing for the first time, and I felt super cool because I was driving a V8 pickup and back then it looked a little bit prettier um, it's actually kind of surreal to have uh, you know my childhood truck sitting in my driveway 
and I wish I could explain the excitement I have right now. Um, but you guys will see that later. When we start tearing into this thing, it's gonna be wild. And Frank over here, uh, Packard in YouTube channel, he's also super excited about it um, because he doesn't like using the garage. And his, that is not true. So his favorite thing is uh, when I pull stuff into the garage and I tear it apart and I'll, uh, I'll need a part or I'll just run out of time and I'll just kind of leave it there for a few weeks. So, you know, he'll come out to work on something and he won't have room and he's like, you know what? I don't have to do it now. And I totally wasn't even excited about it. I didn't want to get in any garage time. So like, thanks Clayton. So um, what we're going to do with this is um, <laughs> I'm gonna pull it in there and I'm gonna tear it apart and uh, yeah, it, it just won't move for the next year and, and Frank will thank me for it. And oh, it'll, definitely. It'll be his favorite. No, uh, trying to avoid that, I wanna try to uh, uh, kinda wait until it's time to get things done on it to pull it in and tear it apart. I wanna try to be efficient on this project, but it is gonna be a very big project. Uh, this ain't gonna be bolt-ons. This ain't gonna be uh, simple ordering parts and putting them on. Um, this isn't gonna be simply taking parts off. It's gonna be a lot of custom cool stuff. So you guys hang tight. You guys are gonna love it. As you can see, we have a big tree here. So in, in case you guys may be wondering, when he said the Packard and YouTube channel, it'll actually become the Shade Tree Packard and YouTube channel because I'll be working in the shade <laughs> quite a bit. Um, and then I'll just have to wear a poncho like on the rainy days and build a igloo for the winter so see so what's gonna happen is is he's gonna sneak out here while I'm asleep because I sleep more than him and he's going to uh he's gonna come out here and turn on the headlights and crank up the radio and he's gonna drain that battery every time I charge it so that way I can't move the truck into the garage yeah so if I want to work on something that day, I just got to kill his battery. That's all there is. Yeah, to. and then I can't pull it in, and then I can't take up all of the room. Actually, I should have thought. That's a good idea. I should have thought about that. You should have thought about that. I'm surprised you well, didn't. Well, now we know what's going to happen, YouTube. So, <laughs> so uh, if you don't follow Frank, he is on uh, Packard in YouTube channel. I'll actually put his link in the description. He has a 2019 Volkswagen Tiguan. It's getting a bunch of awesome parts. He's actually got some big stuff coming along the way. He's done a partial reveal on some of it some um but that's going to be awesome too so uh if you like nice cool fast clean cars definitely follow his stuff i'm putting a toaster in it yeah like i mean all the bread like it, it'll because sometimes i just need to eat out on the road and we want some hoagie so yeah yep <laughs> <laughs> so uh yeah he's He's planning on going to AutoZone and getting one of the, like, the stick-on hood scoops. It's going to be totally sick. Yeah. That's how we do stuff around here. Remember, but, guys, stick-on stick on hood scoops and lots of stickers adds performance. Oh, like, so much performance. Like, yeah. I was, uh, I was, you know, out there talking to a guy the other day, and he was talking about getting his stuff tuned, and I was like, dude, why? Like, don't you know how cheap stickers are? You're stupid like ecs tuning k and n stuff like that yeah like why would you totally buy their works. parts when you can just email them and ask for some stickers like it achieves the same thing exactly you don't even like the parts are just for show you know what i mean the stickers is actually where you get your power and you get a you get a thousand horsepower if you put wheel lights on there like what you used yep, to put on yep. bicycles almost like rock lights oh dude yep. it looks totally cool and the best thing is it helps you see at night it's like a little flashlight yeah it, <laughs> multi-purpose <laughs> um so to get this onto the truck um i called up my buddy joey and this is how you sucker your friends into helping you do things um this is a chevy he drives a ford if you mention a chevy going onto a trailer then they show up with their ford that's how you do that so if you have a ford that you need on a trailer and you have a buddy with a ford just tell him it's a chevy and then he'll show up he may be a little disappointed but then he's already there, so there's the convenience factor. <laughs> so thank you guys for checking out the video. Um, 
I'm super excited about this project. Hopefully we can pull the trigger on it sometime soon. Um, I do have a pretty solid plan into play, but if you have any suggestions on what we can do for this project, let me know. Uh, if you have any feedback on how the videos are, uh, feedback on my filming, on my editing, um, I'm always willing to learn, always willing to change. So if you guys have any advice, any tips, or just tell me what you think, it'd be greatly appreciated. Uh, thank you guys for checking out the videos. Thanks to all of you who are subscribing. Um, this is actually going pretty well for uh, how much I have done on here. So I'm glad that you guys are showing an interest. And, uh, you know, that's kind of pushing me to keep pushing out content for you. And the content's going to get a lot better, I promise you. Um, I've, I've been really trying to keep some interesting videos up. Uh, they're not quite up to what I think is par, but the ones here coming up definitely will be. Um, we're about to get into the exciting stuff. But uh, eventually, this truck will be really good. Eventually, this channel will be pretty good. So uh, that uh, that's kind of the gist of the channel naming. Eventually, it'll all be pretty good. It just takes time, takes a lot of learning, takes a lot of failures along the way. But we're living. <laughs>